Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Sean from visibledark.ca and in this video uh, I wanted to just update you guys on something that I've been working on. In this video we are going to look at this. This is the Triad Ultra Quad Ultra Quad Quad Band? Quad Band. The Triad Quad... <laughs> It's the Triad Quad Band Ultra Filter. There, I got it. Um, I got this from OPT Corp and uh, um, optcorp.com, OPT, the Telescope Authority. Um, I put a link to the filter in the description below. You can check it out there, read more about it. This filter is pretty cool because it does four narrow band channels in one. That's four narrow band channels in one. So far, really impressed this is uh this is a really interesting filter so if you have a one-shot color camera a dslr or a cooled cmos color camera um, this filter is for you um, if you're shooting uh, from your backyard astrophotography in the city um, where you know you got lots of light pollution uh, this is something that you really want to check out and consider adding to your gear um, so far i'm really impressed with it and i'll tell you more about that coming up. I have mounted my William Optic Zenith Star 71 on top of the Esprit 100. Um, I'm using the Zenith Star 71 for this testing purposes. Um, I didn't want to dismantle the Esprit and the Moravian CCD setup that I've got. It's all uh, it's all together and it works great so definitely don't want to touch that. Um, so I mounted, uh, piggybacked uh, my Xenostar refractor on top of it and uh, I have the uh, QHY 168C cooled CMOS camera, it's a color camera, uh, attached to it. And um, this uh, Triad uh, Ultra Band, Quad Band, Ultra Band filter is threaded, it's a two inch filter and it's threaded in front of the camera and uh, it uh, cuts a lot of light pollution and um, it uh, focuses in on the uh, H-beta, the H-alpha, the oxygen-3, and the sulfur-2. So you get those four narrowband channels all in one filter and it's really actually kind of cool stuff. Um, I have some test images, a couple test images that I took uh, and I think you'll be impressed. I know I was. This is a 50 minute result that I got with the Triad Quad Band Ultra Filter from OPT. Um, this is actually really impressive. This data that we're looking at, if I just uh, enlarge it, um, this data was shot uh, in, the scope was pointed into Bortle 8 Sky. Now that's almost as bad as it gets for light pollution. Um, in my, uh, the, the area that uh, I'm imaging from, uh, depending on what part of the sky I'm, I'm shooting into or I'm imaging, um, I can have a Bortle 8 sky or I could have a Bortle 7 sky. I can even, if I'm pointed away from the city, uh, over uh, rural areas that uh, are um, uh, surrounding, I can actually get a Bortle 6 sky. But, for the uh, the uh, elephant trunk uh, nebula rising right now, um, coming into season, um, this is situated right over the city core, and I'm shooting into Bortle 8 sky. So, 50 minutes of data shooting through a lot of light pollution. This actually is uh, really impressive. Um, I'm uh, actually kind of blown away with the detail that emerged with such uh, little integration time, um, little acquisition time. And the data is actually pretty clean too uh, for uh, such a limited acquisition time. Uh, this is using the QHY-168C which is uh, also available from OPT and um, it, uh, it's actually very low read noise on it and uh, that was uh, fairly impressive too. So adding more data to this um, is only going to be a bigger wow in my opinion. Um, now I was able to do that. I've had pretty poor skies lately so uh, a lot of you know the weather just hasn't cooperated and I've ended up with uh, more cloudy nights than, than clear nights and uh, haven't had the opportunity to do uh, to go along with this uh, this triad quad band filter but um, it uh, I was able to one night um, get 
four and a half hours um, so far. I want to add more. But let's go over and have a look at the four and a half hours so that we can see the, uh, the difference and uh, what we've got. And there is the four and a half hours. Wow, right? That is really incredible for four and a half hours. Um, that I've, I've, I've had to image a lot longer than that with, uh, with LRGB filters and uh, uh, H-alpha filters in order to get that kind of result. So this is actually really, really, really impressive stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to um, being able to go longer on this. I want to collect more data. The Triad filter from OPT allows you to capture um, in uh, H-beta, H-alpha, uh, the oxygen-3, and the sulfur-2, like I've said. Um, this this uh, graph here shows the transmission lines um, that it uh, captures. And uh, it's a nice uh, nice filter, nice looking fil filter. Really good value, you're, you're, you're basically getting four filters in one. So it's actually uh, a really good value. Um, now, the results are going to be interesting to see, and um, this is a new filter for me. I haven't had a, uh, an opportunity to use it much uh, yet, but uh, more more clear skies will be coming, hopefully, and uh, I'll be able to get a chance to do that. If, if I can do it, I'm trying to do 20 hours, but there's no, no guarantees that's what I'll end up getting, but uh, it depends on my patience too. Uh, sometimes I like to jump around from target to target. Uh, it's, it's hard to stay on one target, especially when you're having fun like this with a filter that uh, really does an amazing job. You just want to try and image everything. So, um, But uh, I want to go longer and I want to see what kind of results I get if I do that because typically when I image, I do go long hours. Um, I don't usually run short hours unless there's a, a really good reason for me uh, not to, whether um, I feel that the, the result is, is excellent at that amount of hours, four or five hours, say. Um, or maybe it's an object that uh, I'm not terribly interested in, so I don't spend as much time on it. But most times when I'm imaging, I'll be imaging for the 10 hours, 12 hours, uh, 15 or, or 20 hours and, and my uh, longest that I've actually done is the uh, uh, 26 hours on the Iris Nebula so um, I do tend to go long and that's what I want to do with this uh, triad quad band filter um, on the Elephant Trunk Nebula uh, IC 1396 I want to go long 20 hours and see what kind of results I get so if we uh, dive deeper into this image, um, you can see that the detail that uh, emerged from it is <laughs> really fantastic. I mean, it's quite a difference if you look at going from uh, the 50 minutes. Uh, the 50 minutes was, was impressive, obviously, uh, but when you jump to the four and a half hours, bam, everything jumps out at you. And um, it's actually, the detail is, is incredible and the noise has been uh, reduced, huge amount of noise reduction uh, just by going for four and a half hours. Um, the camera, the QHY-168C, uh, like I said already, is very low read noise, uh, so going you know, having more frames to stack, you're, you're, you're reducing that noise level in your images and uh, four and a half hours was quite dramatically uh, uh, different from the 50 minutes. So the, um, the potential is there. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is a great image on its own, four and a half hours. I, you know, um, you'd almost be, for me to go 20 hours, uh, which, which I will do, uh, but I mean, you could walk away from this saying, I'm done, four and a half hours, look at this image, wow, fantastic stuff. This filter really does an amazing job, I'm really impressed with it. The only, uh, I haven't had a chance to check it yet with very bright stars. Um, my one concern might be um, if you get a lot of halo uh, emerging around brighter stars. So that's something that hopefully I'll be able to get a target that has a brighter star in it that we can see what kind of results I get um, with the, the haloing uh, effect on bright stars. Um, that tends to happen sometimes with certain uh, setups, as we know, uh, can be 
uh, internal reflections. It could be uh, the coatings on the filters. Uh, it could be coatings on the telescope lenses. It, there's all sorts of possibilities, but um, uh, I know that uh, from the equipment that I've used and used it past that the halo effect uh, doesn't exist. So with the equipment that I'm using, so. Uh, testing this filter further on a, uh, an object that has a really bright star in it will be interesting to see. Uh, failing an object, I might just point it at a bright star, one of the bright stars like Vega or something, and uh, take some images and see if I get any haloing effect occurring. Uh, do some 5 minute subs or 10 minute subs and see what, what happens. Um, that would still be a, a good test just to see how it responds on that end of it. But so far this is uh extremely impressive and uh you can't uh you, you can't help but go wow when you look at this image and uh and think you know four and a half hours in light polluted skies bordel eight light polluted sky um that this object is fairly low still in the sky over the city core when I'm imaging it. Um, it does by by morning, early, you know, early morning 4 a.m. It does rise high enough in the sky that it would be out of that Bortle 8 and into the Bortle 7 sky. Um, but for the most part, all of this data was collected in Bortle 8 sky. So, wow, very impressive stuff. Uh, something to check out. Check. I actually included a link for the OPT uh, Triad quad band filter in the description. Um, Please go and check that out. Have a look at it. Get more information. Um, and uh, you can also, I'm including the link for the QHY168C camera, which is a 16 megapixel cooled CMOS camera. Um, I've actually had a lot of fun with that so far, even though I haven't had a lot of opportunity to, uh, to use uh, either. Uh, but so far, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's a deviation from... Uh, doing the monochrome imaging, which I use with the Moravian CCD, but uh, um, it's going back using a color, one-shot color, and uh, uh, this format is kind of going back to my roots. I started off as a DSLR astrophotographer, um, and the camera wasn't even modified uh, back then in 2008. It, it wasn't. Uh, it was just a stock uh, Rebel XT. DSLR that I used and it was only later that I purchased a, a modified camera um, so coming back to one shot color in the cool CMOS uh, sense is uh, a lot of fun join this camera it's got low read noise it's high sensitivity uh, click on the link check it out um, and we'll uh, do some more testing of course with these uh, with, with, with this filter okay so there's an update for you on what I've been doing um, that is uh, some really interesting stuff with the triad uh, quad band ultra filter uh, looking forward to uh, doing some more imaging with it and uh, that uh, will be uh, coming up uh, soon hopefully skies are kind of iffy weather's a little iffy uh, but uh, there might be some clear uh, opportunities somewhere in there so I'm gonna see if I can uh, get more data on the uh, on IC1396 uh, but also if I can get more data on uh, maybe another object and uh, do some comparison uh, continue this uh, this uh, fun that I'm having with this filter uh, definitely uh, check out the links uh, below for the uh, the filter and the QHY168C uh, you can get more information and uh, uh, I want to thank uh, OPT for supplying the filter to me um, for testing purposes. Uh, that's been uh, great and I appreciate that. Feel free to comment below and uh, let me know what you think of the results that I got. Um, if you're using this filter, uh, by all means comment, let me know uh, what you think of your results and uh, uh, let the others know that are uh, watching um, how the uh, filter performs for you. So thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like, uh, always appreciate that um, and uh, clear skies to everyone and we'll see you in the next video.